Yo, what is going on guys? Jack here, and welcome to episode 55 of our Tracksuit to the Top series here with Lewis FC for the final time in the Championship. Hopefully you guys are good. If you missed last episode or the episode before, uh, I think they were both quite long episodes if memory serves me right. Definitely go check them out. Uh, today, we're going to be reviewing kind of the squad, end of season stuff. And, you know, a few other bits and bobs. I think the first thing I should start with, and this is something that people have asked about for a while, is what's happening with the stadium? You know, wh where are you at? Well, we'll start with the facilities. You can see we're due to move into a new 15,000-seater stadium in two years' time. Fantastic news. A 15,000-seater stadium isn't massive, and I probably think we'll upgrade immediately. But it's a starting point. We've been limited in the dripping pan to 5,000 seats. So to get that expansion's good. Just while we're here, just so you guys can see, you can see we've got adequate junior uh, coaching, fairly basic youth recruitment, adequate youth facilities and average training facilities. So we're doing okay on that front. I've tried to make a thing of upgrading our facilities as we go. Uh, our finances have been pretty healthy for the most part. They've gone pretty down south this year, but that's largely down to the fact that I've been investing heavily in the squad and also this big kind of decline here of 2 million or whatever uh, wasn't helped really by the stadium being announced because that did take a little bit of money. But we've got a loan to cover a lot of it. Um, it's not actually too bad or a loan all things considering, so I'm quite happy with that one. Anyway, um, having a look elsewhere, we should probably start with the squad, the people who have made the dreams come true this year, and, um, well, the starting 11 of my choice, I guess. So this year was a bit of a, an odd year at the back. We don't really have the strength that we're going to need going up, but going forward, I feel quite confident with a lot of the players in the final third being able to make the step up to the Premier League. I mean, the fact that Matthew Lewis and Ihi Nacho got... Almost, well, no, more than 70 goals between them. Um, I think it's testament to how good they are. Ihi Nacho, the top goal scorer this season, been absolutely incredible, the Nigerian international. Looking like an absolute bargain at £1.9 million. Pounds. 37 goals, 14 assists, 10 player of the matches and a 7.71 average rate for him. Matthew Lewis, of course, joined us on loan this year. Um, in an ideal scenario, I'd love, love, love uh, to get him on a longer deal. Loan him again, sign him if possible, but I think signing him is going to kind of be troublesome at the moment just because Newcastle, I think, are still going to want a fair bit of money. But he had a great year for us this year, 11 assists, 31 goals for him. And um, him and Ihi Nacho, really, with their goals, single-handedly carried us uh, throughout this year. I mean, that's not to say that other players didn't play their part, but without these two guys, it certainly wouldn't have been possible to get promotion. Looking at Newcastle's striker situation... Um, it's kind of odd because they're only playing with one up front and they've got quite a lot of strikers like uh, Bakali, uh, Immobile, um, Yusuf Poulsen, AU, Ayosi Perez. They, they've got lots of strikers and so I think, and I'm quite confident, that if they decide to stick with this system they're playing, that we may, may, may be able to get Matthew Lewis on loan again because he's not going to get any first team football at them. So that's maybe good news. I can't actually submit a loan offer till the end of the year. Uh, elsewhere in the squad, if we just sort by average ratings, you can see here Rolando Aarons, or Aarons, however you want to say it. I say Aarons because he's Jamaican. Um, having a very good season. We signed him last year on a free and he was a good player then. This year, step up. I didn't know how well some of our players were going to adapt to this level of football, the championship. It's a bit different to League One, but he's done superbly for us. 25 assists in 42 games and nine goals too. The Jamaican international has been in fine, fine form this year and I'm really going to be putting some faith in him next year uh, to step things up for the Premier League. And I think he's capable. I think he's proven this year that he can play at this kind of level and if he can play this well at this level, even if he can't perform quite in such a dominant fashion, there's no reason to suggest that he shouldn't be able to play to an adequate level in the Premier League for us. Other players play well, Yaya, or I was about to say Yaya Sonogo, that's because a load of people in the comments have been saying he's a bit, he should be called Yaya Sonogo because he's like Yaya Torre's regen cousin. Uh, but he's doing very well this year, the 21 year old. Of course, got a work permit this year. Currently with the Ivory Coast squad, if we look at his transfers, a lot of Premier League teams interested. Very, very determined to keep hold of him. He's had a great first year. 10 assists, 5 goals in 21 games is pretty pleasing. We have got to just keep an eye on the injuries. He had a few um, this year in the season before, during his time at the club. The two-month injury this year was kind of a shame, but he's bounced back from that well, so that's pretty pleasing. 
Uh, and also Borthwick Jackson, um, a bit of an unsung hero, I kind of feel like the centre-back. Joined us, of course, in League 2, uh, another player who's kind of made the step up through the divisions, and uh, this year he played quite well. He got two goals and six assists in 41 games, which, considering he's a centre-back, he's not too shabby, and considering our defensive record to have a rating that high, um, what he does do right, he certainly does right. If we look at the assists, Cameron Stewart's also done well out on the right, kind of the, the opposite of Rolando Aarons, or Aarons. I need to decide. I'm just going to keep calling him Aarons, I think, guys, because I've called him that for the entire series, and I know people hate it, but YOLO, I'm going to hell. Third time in the series I've said that. Anyway, um, looking at this, you can see uh, Stewart's played well again. He's getting on a little bit, Stewart, a player who I might look to replace. He's okay, but he's not. Premier League quality. I think that's the case with quite a few of these players. I think my priorities really got to be to strengthen the uh, back line and rely on Ihe Nacho and Matthew Lewis to kind of do as much as they can for us in the final third. But I think with their goals, we should be okay. Elsewhere, uh, what else has been going on really? It's been a mixed bag this season. I kind of feel like We've done really well, but we've left ourselves in a situation where going up into the Premier League, there's going to be a lot that has to be changed. With the tactics, a few people have been asking, "Oh, what's gonna, what are you gonna do with the tactics going up? You know, how are you gonna cope with this?" Well, this is the golden question. It's a question of how am I gonna keep playing as attacking as I am when we're going away to Old Trafford? And the answer is, I can't play that attacking. Maybe against some of the smaller teams, we'll go with this kind of system, try and put as much pressure as we can uh, on the opposition, even if we're not as good as them. You know, technically speaking, I'd love to see us kind of push on and do well. Just one more player, just want to cover is Jerome Sinclair, a player who, who of course had a great year last year, but this year one goal in 11 games. Granted, eight were on off the bench, but he's just not done it for us. The injuries that he's had this year have kept him out of the first team squad. It's been an ongoing issue in his career, and unfortunately this year has been a year to forget for him after such a great season last season. So anyway, um, what else can we talk about here? I've got a list in front of me. So the tactics, I'm not sure what we're going to change. A few people have asked for what you can see here. Uh, I am mindful that, I, I, if you don't know, I upload on a, like a backlog and the new update for FM might be out by the time you're watching this. And if it is, this tactic might not work. And also you do need the players to play this. But you can see some of the um, team instructions there playing flexible and attacking. I like to keep tactics simple. I see some people and they'll just have every, every everything ticked. You know, everything has to be green or red. Simple is better in my opinion. So anyway, uh, let's have a look at the training. Because training something that I didn't really cover in the last few end of season reviews. But some people wanted to see it. So we'll cover it. So you can see here, we've got a squad happiness. Overall, the squad are fairly happy. Those who aren't happy, if you don't know, you can insert columns at the top here. Or at least you could... It's not letting me now. Uh, you, you used to be able to insert columns to show the happiness. Huh. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Anyway, look at the squad fitness. A few players not fit. It's the end of the season. We don't really care about that. If we look at the team training, I can't show you that. But for this year, it's been on defending set pieces for a lot of it. In terms of overall performances, players playing really well. You can see kind of what my players' general focuses are on. I tend to, with most players, focus on a role rather than a specific uh, attribute. Unless there's one that's really, really kind of the big issue. So a good, a good example of this would be Matthew Lewis, who I've got set on dribbling because he only has eight dribbling and I'd like to get that higher. Um, whereas for the most part, uh, if a player is kind of at a good level where he's well-rounded or he has a number of weaknesses, I'll try and set a role that covers all of those weaknesses. So for example, with Sonogo, he doesn't have any glaringly obvious weaknesses. So I actually am coaching him as a roaming playmaker. It's not necessarily the role that I think he's going to play in, but it allows him to get good attention to all kind of the, the, the fundamentals, I guess, of a centre mid. So that's a little thing there. In terms of my actual coach, it's not covered this in a while, but you can see the overall kind of ratings here. Um, I see a lot of people talk about these and go, well, why are my players complaining about uh, kind of, you know, their, their workload, who's coaching them and stuff? One thing that's really important this year is to ensure that you have multiple coaches covering the same area. So, for example, on tactics here, we've got three people covering it. As a result, the workload's light, which means players get more individual kind of attention. Whereas on something that's average, I've only got two coaches covering it, and so the players might not get as much kind of attention as they'd like. Um, there's a few familiar names here. You've got Bradley Wright Phillips, 
and then a few others. I do think I need to have a big revamp of this going into the Premier League. Honestly, I've not really touched my coaching staff in the last few years. That's just because I've been quite happy with the setup we've had, but we need to kind of get some of these a little bit higher if we can, especially going up into the Premier League. That's going to be kind of a priority, I guess, going forward. Be interesting to cover at the end of last season, uh, or rather at the end of next season, where we're at in terms of that. So anyway, in terms of other stuff going on at the club, we'll just cover the general info of the club. So you can see here, obviously, we got ah, we got another promotion. We got six straight promotions. If you were around for the FC United or Manchester Save, you'll know we got six promotions in seven years. We've outdone ourselves this year. Obviously, this is two years on. I've played FM religiously for an extra two years. Uh, a few people have asked about um, going up. My best advice would be to just scout out players and look at Bosman's every year with two or three months left to the end of the year make sure you're scouting every single player whose contract expires in six months uh, you know so you can approach them but you'll have their full information in advance I can't stress this year with the new scouting system how you have to scout a player for a long period of time how important it is to be scouting in advance so if you think in January you're going to be looking for a striker start scouting for a striker in September if you can um, it sounds obvious when I say it like that, but not enough people kind of wait until the transfer window opens to start scouting players. And with the new system, a month really isn't long enough to kind of build up a full picture of how good players are. So anyway, looking at the club overview here, you can see we are a club legend. Alex Samuel, an icon. Unfortunately, he's not done too much this year. I mean, he's done a fair bit. Maybe that's not a fair assessment, but he's not really a Premier League quality player. But I hope to keep him around for just a little bit longer, if possible. Uh, Favourite personnel, Ihi Nacho and Matthew Lewis, both making a mark. Cool to see Kelechi kind of... I guess appear here considering he's only been at the club a year but his goals have been kind of essential I guess in our progress obviously captain Pierce Sweeney vice captain Shea Yojo were somewhat ahead of our rivals and our media prediction for this year was sixth and of course we ended up finishing top of the league so the, the media actually rated our squad quite highly and I'm pleased to say that we've kind of met that assessment and more looking at the history overview you can see all the trophies won here you can see that um, Craig Mullen is on 170 league appearances I don't think he's going to overtake Ricky Banks as 196 unfortunately and um, top goal scorer you can see Matthew Lewis holds the current record for goals in this season with 48 and Ichi Nacho scored 39 this year so just a little bit behind in terms of landmarks there's not been that many huge landmarks I'll put, I'll put this up if you want to pause it please do pause it um, you can kind of take a, a look at what's happened. You can see that we had our stadium initially upgraded to 4,000 seater, then to 5,000 seater two years ago. And as I mentioned this year, we are um, upgrading our stadium. And as a result, um, we're in a situation where we're going to be filling it, hopefully, and moving away from the dripping pan, which is a little bit saddening. So in terms of the competition overview, how we did this year, of course we not, got knocked out in the fourth round of the FA Cup by Everton, West Ham went on to win it. Um, in the Capital One Cup, out in the third round, Man City win the, winning the whole thing. We did lose to Tottenham, but we did lose in quite humiliating fashion and that's something we've got to look to avoid this coming year. And then in the Championship, of course we did win the league, Cardiff came second, and then Sunderland went through via the playoffs. Looking at the uh, kind of stats here, you can see Ihi Nacho and Matthew Lewis finishing the top two goal scorers. When you have the top two goal scorers in any competition, you're pretty much guaranteeing yourself the title. There's very few champ like times where you'll get the top two goal scorers and be in that kind of situation. Looking at the average ratings, we have three out of the top four. Rolando Ahrens joining our two goal scorers there. And the reason Rolando Ahrens is so high is because he got 25 assists this year. Uh, and also Ihi Nacho getting 10 total awards. Just wonder if we bring up the full player stats page. Is there anything we've missed? I guess Ihi Nacho getting 126 key passes is a, an interesting one. It kind of shows how much he contributes as well as just scoring. And also Rolando Aaron's getting um, the best average distance covered. Or is that total distance? It must be total distance. I can't tell because I don't know what units of measurements it's in. But either way, he's up there, he runs a lot. And uh, Balfour Jackson, a naughty boy, been, been red carded and banned a few times this year um, with 14 yellow cards, he's up there. In terms of team stats, you can see we have the best form. Uh, if we look at a few of the more interesting ones, like average attendance, you can see this year lowest average attendance, but we filled our stadium every game. 
Um, if we then go to by capacity, we are top because we've had 100%. Average possession, um, we're actually not that high. We have less than 50%, which um, I guess shows you don't really need possession to do well. In terms of conceding, defensively we've not been great this year. We conceded the 17th most, um, which not not great, not great. Um, what else is there? I'm trying to think what other useful stuff there is here. I guess salary per year, you can see we have one of the smaller salaries. Despite the fact that we were kind of on the verge of failing FFP, um, we really don't spend that much on players. It's just a case of because we're in a small stadium, that really holds us back. Of course, with us getting promoted this year, the TV money the Premier League is certainly going to help to rectify any financial issues the club may have found themselves under. So that's that. In terms of my own personal overview, just to wrap things up here, you can see if we look at my profile, you can see my coaching stats here. I honestly can't remember what they started at. I'm sure someone will let me know in the comments. I feel like it was 10 fitness coaching I had, and then maybe 10 technique. I, I Honestly, I can't remember. It was that long ago. You can see the preferred formation is a 4 4 2 bit of a classic manager at the moment. I feel like this might get a little bit more exotic as we add some more quality to the side, but a good old 4-4-2 has seen us and served as well throughout the Football League. You can see in terms of my overall career stats, 61 win percentage if we just look at my history. Um, 319 games played, 2,154 days in charge of the club, 0 days on holiday, 10 awards, highest fee spent was for Ihi Nacho, 5 million for Pierre Cisse was the highest fee we ever received. He looks like a great player to be honest, I'm a bit sad that I had to sell him but we got a decent fee for him in 5 million pounds. He hasn't actually performed that well for Dynamo Kiev either so I guess we kind of have the last laugh there. Obviously we have one cup win which is the Johnson's Paint Trophy last season, 5 league wins, 6 promotions, unfortunately for us we couldn't get 6 out of 6 because um, we finished second in the conference and had to go up via the playoffs. In terms of my contract, I'm on pennies still. 600 quid I'm on. Well, I'm looking forward to that going up, uh, hopefully next year. Hopefully the board want to keep me on for longer. Um, I think that's everything, really. If there's anything I've missed that you'd like to see me cover next season, in the, the end of season review, please do let me know. I kind of made a list this episode of stuff I wanted to cover, so I think I covered most of what people wanted to see. If there's anything that I did miss, just leave it in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, please do smash the like button. Next episode will be coming up um, in the near future, probably later today, as we will be making our way into our first Premier League campaign. Be interesting to see what kind of players we can attract, and also what kind of transfer and wage budget we get with our money because although we have 9 million there at the moment I have a feeling that might be lowered depending on how the club balance is looking so anyway uh, hopefully I'll see you guys for that one uh, and other than that it is me Jack and I'll talk to you guys in a bit I'm out